Hi everybody, Bobby from the Rabbitry Center, and today we're gonna hook up our fans. It's that time of year again. It's the second week into May right now. It's getting hot. Today it's almost gonna hit 80. And you know, anytime it hits 80s into the 90s, you really wanna start paying attention to your rabbits and, and try your best to cool them down with some frozen bottles, or in our case, we've always used solar panels and computer fans. So I'll show you the first step. We ended up replacing some breeders this year, so we actually don't have as many cages to hang fans, so that's kind of good news. But today we're gonna make sure every cage that has rabbits in it ha has a fan, so uh, in the next couple weeks when it starts to heat up, they'll be able to sit in front of that fan. We put it right in front of the water bowl so they're able to, to get some water on their face and they really feel that breeze hitting them and it's it, you can tell it really relaxes them. So uh, I'll go grab the fans and we'll start hooking them up. So this is our stand for our solar panels. It's really simple to make. We just made this out of two by threes and timbers. Uh, this is at least a few years old and uh, works really well. We just wire them to a terminal block and then the terminal block sends it off to the solar charge controller, which sends the, all the different voltages or wattages to all the different fans. It's really important to run this to a solar charge controller. That way you don't burn your fans out because if you were to run, because these are two 20 watt panels, and if you were to run 40 watts to a small computer fan that's only running on uh, 0.03 amps, or 0.3 amps, that would burn it out, that'd be too much power. And eventually you'll come out and the fan's not working, and you can smell it and it will smell burnt. So, and that's what happened, it's just too much. So, run this to a solar charge controller, which is a really inexpensive insurance device that's how i look at it it's insurance that nothing will will be damaged so purchase a cheap ten dollar solar charge controller that's all it takes you now this is a really cool way to run power uh, permanently and you never have to pay for electricity of course you have to cry once buy once but once you have your solar panels and your terminal blocks and your wiring um, and it's all relatively inexpensive and we're not talking i mean maybe a hundred dollars will get you going for several different cages so if you were to click rabbitry tools or hot weather in our the rabbitry center storefront you'll see all our products that we use and it'll really make it easy for you to get these products plus there's no extra charge all those links are free it's just to help folks and plus if you use those links you're helping our channel so thank you so much amazon will actually help us if folks are using that so thank you so much for doing that that's a great way to contribute to our channel so behind me is our terminal blocks, our solar panel, the wiring comes in, we, we run it through the trees to try to keep it above everything so we can walk under the wires, but then it goes to our terminal blocks which shoots off to all the fans. We wire the solar panels to the terminal block because the terminal block has lots of different terminals where lots of different fans can can get hooked up. The terminal block is what makes it so you can splice off in different directions to wherever the fans need or wherever your cages are. If you guys want to see more about how to hook it up, I'll put a video up in the corner for you. I'm getting a little bit, but I bet it's due because this wiring is so, so corroded. So I'm going to try to get to some new wiring without breaking the wire. I mean, this stuff, it gets brittle when you don't take it inside but there's just so much to do and I don't wanna, I mean, I really get lucky every year. It doesn't really seem to take too much to get everything going. These fans are just, whew. Okay. Okie dokie. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing to this wire. I mean, it's so thin. That's why you really don't need it's kind of an overkill on our speaker wire, but I'm, I get it that big, so we have a good chance at connecting to getting a good, uh, because the longer you run this through the, the forest, it kind of drains on your power. So, there we go. Just like that. I kind of like to, to prop it up on the cage so the rabbits have a hard time getting to the wiring. I also have used sticks like this. All I do is I just run it through the hole and wrap it to space it. 
but this is this needs a new wiring job. I already rewired it once. Okay, so we got to get this cleaned up. Sometimes it's, it's so it's so brittle. Whew, it's a little better. All right, we found wire. I'm having more success with. Golly, about dang time. Whew. Almost ran out of wire. Yeah, I mean, I complain about this, but it doesn't really take long. I mean, like maybe a few minutes per fan. You don't hear me complain, I do it off camera. <laughs> uh, nobody wants to sit there and listen to me cuss. Go the extra mile to make sure that your rabbits are comfortable because that's what makes your rabbits so healthy and they produce, when they're comfortable, they will produce for you. Come on, baby, go. They want to go. There it goes. <laughs> She's fighting it though. I like to put it right over the water because it's a terrific spot where when they get their face wet, they'll really feel that cold air and it will cool them down instantly. Here's a situation where it's a little scary because I may have to run a new wire because I don't have um, I don't have very much wire to play with here. Oh man, I can almost spot where it's swollen, and then it kind of there we go. I can almost spot where the bad wire is. Okay, I'm gonna need a fan that has some nice long wires for this to for this to work. Okay, I've noticed that the the smaller caps really seem to work the best. The smallest caps, gray, 22 to 16, 22 to 16 AWG. Got the positive hooked or the negative hooked up. Red is positive. And, oh, we gotta cut that one more time. And this wire is so small, I have, to, I have to clip the last hole and then I have to turn it kind of sideways to get some wire to it. There we go. There it goes. Is that easy or what? So with all my wiring that I need, I always leave it long. I've gotten to the habit of leaving it really long cutting it about a foot because you just keep cutting it down. Same thing with this that comes out. I usually leave it really long and then I'll just kind of shove it back in there because over the years I've noticed I'm going to go through a lot hooking it back up in the spring. Not a lot, but just I go through some. Oh, sorry. I just scared the rabbit. My elbow hit the cage when I tried to splice the wire. I'm running in the hide until you get done. <laughs> Just so nervous. Nervous nillies. Too loud. Okay. I think I'm getting better at this. That one went faster. Now that's actually running. It doesn't run very strong because the solar panels are actually turned over. So the sun that's hitting the grass and reflecting up, refracting, whatever it is, now watch, I'm gonna walk through the woods, I'm gonna turn the solar panel over and watch it just kick up, it's gonna power up.
So now I'm standing behind, I came back here to actually show you the terminals and the solar charge controller, but I wanted to talk about this stuff. This is garlic mustard. This is um, really common this time of year in the spring, and it looks a lot like buckwheat, but it's not. It's garlic mustard, and you know it's garlic mustard just by when you tear it, you can smell the garlic. It smells just like strong garlic. Um, this is actually purple nettle. Uh, now both of these are weeds, but you boy, talk about, oh, I must be standing on ants, just got bit in the hand. But uh, I'm gonna move, but this is both stuff you can hay out for your rabbits. This isn't their favorite, but they'll eat it. So you may see all the dandelion over my shoulder. It's that time of year again. You know, dandelion really shows up for about a month and then it's gone as soon as it heats up. So take this time to gather up your dandelion. Dandelion has, is, it's used for medicinal purposes. It's a terrific plant to feed to your rabbits. The entire, every part of the dandelion can be fed to rabbits. And uh, I really like to gather up all my dandelion as soon as it pops. I remember my grandpa said, when the dandelion pops, your potatoes should be in the ground. So our potatoes are planted, and now it's time to start gathering all the dandelion. And you know, this stuff you gather is going to be dried and stored, if you, if you gather enough of it, for your fall into winter feed. You know, in the winter time, you wanna feed your fodder, but you also, you'd like to have some, some other food for your rabbits, so when you get time, be sure to take uh, a few minutes and try to fill up a couple buckets and uh, that way you do a little bit every day, you'll have a lot at the end of the season.